Hi. So thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, I am indeed going to be talking to you about emotions and what's up with those, uh, which is something that no one ever told me until I had to figure a lot of it out. And so hopefully I can save some of you the pain. Um, I thought I would just start right in with a worked example. Um, worked example, I'm surrounded by spiders for some reason. <laughs> just obviously provoking some strong emotions. Uh, no, this isn't my actual worked example, but um, they weren't kidding about the spiders. Um, which is, um, this talk itself. I was procrastinating on writing this talk. Uh, I'm like wondering if two of you might have experience of procrastination. I know this is like a rare experience, but... Uh, <laughs> um, but I think most people who procrastinate, like they have the wrong idea about uh, procrastination, how it works. Like procrastination isn't something you're doing because like you're lazy. It's not some weird mysterious thing going on uh, that you're, where you're just like self-sabotaging for no good reason. Procrastination is mostly just like you don't want to do the thing um, on some level. And that was very much my, my experience here. Like once I, I pinned this down, I was um, like, I had a original plan for this talk and uh, like I was procrastinating because on some level I was just like, this is a bad plan, David. You don't want to give this talk this way. Like what's wrong, like, like something's wrong here. And um, I, despite my claims to be emotionally aware, it did take me a couple of weeks to finally pin down what this was. So I'm talking through this. Like there's, a, like, there's a strong fear I wasn't qualified for this talk. Like, I, like um, I'm just some guy. This isn't, my, no, this isn't my background. Like, I'm a computer scientist I, um, or a software developer. I didn't even finish my computer science PhD. Um, but, um, like, um, there's definitely some part of me going, like, no, don't give this talk. No, it's not, not, your, not your field. Um, and this is like a reasonable concern, right? Like there are definitely talks which if I was going to come up and give you a talk about cell biology, I really hope I would be having like this feeling of I'm not qualified to give this talk because I don't know a thing about cell biology. I last did biology and GCSEs. Um, but I am actually qualified to give this talk. Like I'm not, uh, um, like I have been working on this on my own and with other people for um, like most of five years now. I've written about this extensively. Um, I'm not telling you this to like show up my credentials. Like I'm just saying that this feeling that I'm not qualified to give this talk, it's pointing at something, but it's not pointing at like I actually can't give this talk. There is a problem, like, um, which is that there. This talk. No, I am qualified to give this talk insofar as anyone is qualified to give this talk, and also nobody is qualified to give this talk if it was the type of talk I was originally conceiving of. Because um, there's a way of engaging with all of this material, like from the therapy literature, from the psychology literature, which is that basically, if you read it and you believe what they are saying, uh, you're gonna go wrong because everyone is talking really confidently about how emotions work, about here, this is like the one theory that fits everything. And, um, it work, and they tend to work really well for the subset of people they work really well for and really badly for um, the subset of people they don't work really well for. And which is, sounds tautological, but I mean, like there are people in both groups and I've known a lot of people sort of in the course of trying to learn about all this who have basically been messed up because they've gone too all in on some particular theory that wasn't working well for them. Um, and so at this point, I've got, I, like, this starts to be like, okay, I'm no longer procrastinating for a mysterious reason. I'm procrastinating for a very good reason that I'm about to do, you know, that I was going to do a bad plan. Um, so there is a very simple answer to the question, like, what if they take me too seriously? Let's make sure that you don't. Partly by giving a worked example about um, how bad I am at giving this talk, but more importantly, I want to sort of get, go in, like, giving you some guidelines on how seriously to take this talk. I'm pretty sure almost all the things I'm going to be saying to you are useful. Like, this has helped me, this has helped other people I know. Um, I, I'm, I'm not going to just be spouting a bunch of nonsense that you can't know that won't help at all. Some of the things I say might even be true. Um, it's, uh, I think, like, most of what I'm saying is going to be approximately true. Um, and it certainly isn't stuff I've made up, like it's based on a whole bunch of different and reading and practice and so on. Um, but it's definitely not completely right, and I can't necessarily tell you which bits are and aren't right. Uh, this is just how I currently understand it. 
it is how I, I currently understand it. Again, like based on all sorts of other work, but this is the sort of the bits I've synthesized together that work well for me and people like me. So um, like if you two are a highly analytical nerd who likes thinking about things too much, I think we might have one or two of us here, um, then this would probably be more useful to you than a lot of like the therapy literature. If you are very, if you think about things very differently, you might want to like uh, try a different approach. Um, say, this is mostly stuff I wish someone had told me much earlier than they did. Um, unfortunately, it's going to be a very high level overview because I only have half an hour, and so I can't like take you through a detailed therapeutic breakthrough in which you like get to the bottom of any emotional problems you may have. But like, it's sort of I'm trying to point to in the direction of like where I think healthy emotional processing lives and like give you some guidelines on how to get there. Um, but yeah, I actually, you do actually have to do the work if you want to use any of this. Like you're not gonna come out of this suddenly like going, man, emotion snakes, it makes sense now. Um, yeah, so this is stuff I figured out in the last five years or so. I got to my mid thirties and went, nah, started a PhD and was as traditional in a PhD, miserable, um, and went and decided to fix this. Um, sorry, I'm speeding through this slide a bit more to get to the interesting bits, but um, the, um, I did also go to therapy. Uh, for me personally, the book's more useful. If you find a great therapist, then the therapist will, be more, will probably, probably be more useful, but this is the path I took. Um, things got better, um, partly because I quit my PhD. Um, it's uh, one of the advantages of being emotionally, more emotionally aware is that you can tell when what you're doing is a bad idea, and it turns out the PhD wasn't for me. Um, and now it's now, and I'm going to tell you about um, what it is. Okay, so return to the question. Like, emotions, what's up? What, what's up with this? I'm now just going to tell you what's up with this. Um, so the first thing is, like, emotions, um, they are fundamental. They, they start with labeling behaviors. Like um, the reason there is an emotion called anger is not because you can feel angry. It's because you can behave angrily. Um, it's it's not that you can't feel anger, but the description starts with you know, starts with the externally visible behavior. Um, when you feel when you're feeling an emotion, um, that is basically saying you want to behave that way in some on some level. Um, like it may not in the sense that you totally endorse feeling like that feeling that way, but uh, some part of you is going anger. Anger would be good now, or fear. Fear would be good now. Like this, and this is like the procrastination. It wasn't that I didn't want to write the talk, but some part of me didn't want to write the talk. Um, this is because it thinks it's a good idea. Um, I think one of the easy traps to fall into is basically going, emotions are irrational things that are happening for no good reason. That's not true. Like almost all the time, when you're experiencing some strong emotion, it's because like some part of you is like, this is a good idea. Like this is, this is the thing that I need to do right now in order to get what I need. Um, that doesn't mean it's right. Uh, like sometimes um, an emotion is telling you something useful and important and true, and sometimes it's just a bit confused. Like your emotions are you, and um, if any of you are infallible, like please come talk to me afterwards because I'd love to know how you did it, but I'm certainly not. Um, when it's wrong, and this is like one of the important bits, is like you can change this. You can um, uh, basically go, oh right, this is the emotion I'm feeling right now. I don't need to be feeling an emotion. I can feel another emotion. Um, and when, and when it's, it's right, you can like improve on your behavior. You don't have to ignore the emotion. You can, and you can um, go. You can basically go, oh right, that's useful information. I will act on it. Um, like I didn't fix my problems with procrastination on the talk by basically like making the emotion go away. I fix my problems with procrastination on the talk by going, ah, this emotion is telling me useful information. Let me do something about that. Um, here's another worked example um, in, for the other category of problem. Um, again, this one might be slightly relatable, uh, which is help. I'm at a festival cool, lots of, full of lots of cool people I don't know. Any, any of you? Um, <laughs> And um, I, I should say, this isn't a current one for me. This one, I this one is something that I more or less fixed a couple of years ago, but um, it's still useful to go through. Um, uh, you would presumably like to talk to people at this cool festival, like we're all here to socialize, um, but uh, many of them you don't know. That would be awful. Like, can you imagine just going up to someone and saying, hi, this is, hey, I'm David. Like, um, 
uh, the worst, right? And like, why, why, why is it awful? Um, and the, um, this is the sort of the, like the core concern I find, I, or I found, is that like, you're gonna go up to someone, you're gonna make it weird, you're gonna be like fumble, you're going to um, in some way uh, screw up. And, um, but, but like, why is that bad? Like people make, people make mistakes. Um, and, um, and it's not yet necessarily the end of the world. I know it sometimes feels that way, but it isn't, I promise. Um, but for me, like, it feels like, oh no, everyone's gonna laugh at me. Everyone's gonna like, know I'm one of the weird kids. Everyone's gonna, uh, there's gonna be all sorts of social consequences for this. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but this isn't, this isn't a school. Like, we're, we're, we're not a bunch of uh, weird kids. We're not, most of us, we're not gonna see anyone here again unless we really want to. The social dynamics are totally different. Um, this is very much like a, for me, per, for me, a, a school reaction. It is a, like, I'm gonna be seeing this person every day for the next four years, and they're gonna laugh at me with all their friends and so on. Um, but that's not where we are. We're, um, like, we're all the weird kids here. Everyone's fine. Um, like, th th things are basically going to be fine. There will be almost no major social repercussions for screwing this up if and when we do. Um, and so maybe this isn't so bad. Maybe you can just go up and talk to people and like, that's basically okay. Uh, and for me, the, the, going through this sort of thought process genuinely does change the emotional response. Like it doesn't suddenly make the emotion go away. I don't suddenly go, yes, okay, being awkward, that sounds great. I love being awkward. Um, but the sting of it does lessen. And every time you do this, the, um, it does get better. And for me personally, like, it's embarrassing how often this isn't a school is the key emotional revelation I need. Um, because we, um, and I apologize to anyone here who is still in school, because I know there are some children in, in the audience. Uh, uh, for, for you, school situations are the learn to do it better rather than the learn to not be in it, in it to recognize the emotional difference. Um, but for me, like, a lot of your sort of patterns of emotional reaction are laid down in childhood. Um, if when sort of therapists ca talk about like small t trauma, like what they generally actually mean is this is a emotional pattern that you have learned when you were younger and no longer applies to your current situation. It's like it's a bad emotional lesson. Um, and for some people those come from families, for some people those come from school. I'm a school person, my family was great, um, uh, but school not so much. And like, recognizing that this is the sort of shape of the reaction, emotional reaction you're having and noticing the ways in which your current environment is different from where that reaction was learned uh, really sort of starts to shift your emotions in like a more like situationally appropriate direction. Um, I'm just gonna go through like the points of the theory in detail now um, and um, like the first one is just like emotions label behavior. This is, I think, the more counterintuitive, most counterintuitive part of my claims because like everyone is very much used to thinking of emotions as very sort of internal things. Um, like the emotions are what you're feeling, not what you're doing. And um, it's worth sort of laboring, no, uh, elaborating on like why this is backwards in terms of where emotions come from as a concept. Uh, the basic answer is like you can tell that emotions are an external thing because there are a lot of words for them. Um, when we have lots of words for things, it's because you can point to them. Um, if you think about trying to explain pain to someone, um, it's incredibly hard to explain your and like the current pain you're experiencing because pain is not a shared reference. Like um, I can't say it's like it's like this and then stab you or whatever. Like that's considered antisocial. So um, uh, so you end up with sort of very fuzzy references. And similarly, like flavors are much harder to describe than. Um, things you can look at because um, like with a thing you can look at you can just point you can say look it's the thing I'm pointing at with the flavor like what you're currently tasting you can maybe share you can share the food but um, it's 
um, it's harder. And so the more in, share, in the shared world things are, the more we have words for them. And we have a lot of words for emotions. Um, and also, like, as descriptions, they're clearly made up. Like, um, it's, this, this is not to say that emotions aren't real things, but, um, like, where the boundaries of an emotion are. Like, emotions blur into each other. Like, they're just descriptive words for general patterns of things. Uh, the, the metaphor I usually like to use is that emotions are like colors, and like anger, irritation, uh, annoyance are no more real things than like red, fuchsia, magenta. Like they, um, they are descriptive uh, words for observed things, but they just um, they just they're they're just sort of describe broad regions of the ends of space. Oops, uh, I thought I had one more point there. Um, and so, like, often I think what people get hung up on when trying to describe emotions is, um, like, am I feeling angry? Am I feeling grumpy? Am I feeling like one of these different fine grand words? And like, often the question is about as useful as here's a hot dog a sandwich. Um, it's um, like the thing you are trying to understand when you try to understand your emotions is your behavior, and emotional words are useful labels that owls, but not necessarily like very clear-cut distinctions. Um, and obviously like there is an internal counterpart to emotions. This isn't a pure behavioral theory, like um, but um, you, know, you can feel like you can behave angry but you uh, angrily, but you can also feel angry. Um, I keep using angry as an example because it's a really easy example, but the same thing applies to any other emotion. Like, similarly, you can um, behave afraid and you can feel afraid. Um, uh, uh, some emotions, it's easier to see what the behavior is like than others, but there's usually an external counterpoint, an uh, external part. Um, and the way this usually works is that basically like, the emotion you are currently feeling is the behavior that comes naturally to you. Um, so, um, when you feel angry, uh, it's very easy to act angrily, and it's very hard not to act. Well, it's hard not to act, act angrily. You can you can control your behavior, but if you sort of naturally let yourself do gravitate to a particular you know, to uh, sorry, if you do the behavior that it comes naturally, like what will come out is anger. You will sort of your voice will raise. You will sort of take an aggressive aggressive posture, etc. And importantly, this happens even when you're not aware of your emotions. I mean, I, I'm sure like most of us have encountered someone angrily shouting, I'm not angry! Um, or like someone going, no, I'm, I'm completely calm while their hands are shaking on stage or something. And like there is, um, when uh, like the part of you that is handling these emotions is doing its thing even if it is, even if you're not consciously aware of it doing, of it doing its thing. Um, and in fact, most, like, when you're not aware of your emotions, it's, very, it's even harder to not act on them because if you don't know you're angry, you can't withhold, withdraw from being angry. If you don't know you're anxious, you can't take steps to, steps to do it. It's like, because of the fact that emotions is doing what comes naturally, you have to notice that, like, what, that you could do otherwise. And if you want to essentially say, okay, I'm angry, but I, I don't have to behave angrily. Okay, I'm afraid, but I can do it anyway. It, like, it really helps to have that bit where you say, I'm angry, I'm afraid. Um, um, when I say you feel emotions, I, like, I, what I really mean is like literally you feel emotions. There's a common experience that people have of like assuming that um, everyone is using metaphors. Um, I, I got to experience this with visualization, for example. Like I don't visualize, and so I assumed that everyone who said they had pictures in their head was using a metaphor, and no, they, they just have pictures in their head. And this is the same thing with feeling emotions. Like um, when people say you feel your emotions, like they are literally talking about physical feelings in your body. Um, like when you feel angry, like your skin flushes, uh, when you feel afraid, you might feel sort of tightness here. It's not necessarily the same physical sensations. I think there's a lot of commonality, but um, the, if you are currently bad at noticing what your emotions are, the thing you need to do is start paying attention to physical sensations that map to those behaviors. Um, 
there are some subtleties to this, and um, like not all emotions are like super obvious physically, but if you're not paying attention to the physicality of it, that is where you need to start. Um, the general sense used to access this is called interoception. It's, um, it basically is just um, the way we are aware of internal feelings. It's like when you notice you have an upset stomach, when you notice that something is hurting, that's interoception. Um, and this is also what you will you use to actually like learn what you're feeling and what emotions you're experiencing. Um, sorry, I said this one already, uh, but yeah, like basically, um, the way to notice what emotions you're experiencing is to pay attention to these physical changes and sort of learn to identify them and recognize them. Um, and this is just something you can get better at. I will provide a, a reference to a book to an annoyingly named therapy technique called focusing later, which is essentially just the skill, getting skilled at interoception in order to understand your emotions. It's um, like it's easier for some people than others, but it's, uh, um, it is just a learnable skill. Um, I've been talking about parts, like part of me wants this, part of me wants and uh, believes that. Um, and uh, this is from, this is another therapy thing, um, but it is also just like literally like part of the normal language. Like people say this sort of thing all the time. And it's, once you start sort of paying attention to feelings, like it's, it's really annoying because like the, the, a lot of the things people say about parts sound nonsensical until they sound obvious. Um, uh, and like the most nonsensical sounding one is it is useful thinking of these parts as people in their own right. Um, like it's useful to imagining like there is a little version inside you that is angry you or there, oh, and um, is currently the bit going, no, I want to shout, I want to um, do, do this. Um, uh, this is, isn't literally true, probably. Um, like some, some people experience it as more literally true than others. Um, I, like I've... I've had experiences of sort of doing work with parts and feelings where, I, you know, where, like, the best way I can describe it is that the part informed me that yes, it had a name. And this, as I say, this feels ridiculous until it seems obvious. But like, don't don't worry too much about the literalness of it. Um, the way I think is most useful to think about it is, you know, the thing that people say of I'm a different person when I'm with my family, with them, when I'm with my friends, or in this context. Like, the, your parts are those different per different people. Like, there are different versions of you, and those different versions of you are um, all simultaneously present and just come out when in, in situations that need them. And you can access sort of like the feeling of what it would be like to be that version of you, even independently of those situations, by just basically poking at it with interoception. Um, and um, again, I will provide a reference to a book afterwards for sort of doing parts work, um, but, um, but, this, but, but this is what I mean when I say a part. I mean like a version of you that you can access in some circumstance. Um, like I say, feeling an emotion is a strategic choice. Like the part, the part of you doesn't feel an emotion because, um, like, just for the lulls. I mean, it might if the emotion is humor, but um, um, like it has learned at some point that this is a useful reaction. Um, like uh, when I'm scared of screwing up by introducing myself to people, um, that was a legitimate fear back in school. Like it wasn't that I made up in my own head that. Um, no, that bad things could go badly wrong. There were actually circumstances in which things could go badly wrong, and I learned that, that reaction. Um, and yeah, sorry, I got ahead of my slides again. Um, and yeah, so, so these emotional responses are learned from experience. Um, that doesn't mean they're right, and it doesn't mean they're right either because like they've overlearned them, they've learned them in a situation where it doesn't apply. Um, it also just, it's also just like sometimes they're wrong because like sometimes we're wrong. Um, it's, uh, and certainly I've learned emotional responses but in response to things that existed entirely in my head at the time and don't actually make sense even in retrospect, but like usually they are more right than wrong. Um, but most importantly, you should probably take it seriously regardless of whether it's right or wrong. Like one of the reasons why it's useful to think of emotion, of parts as people in their own right is this teaches you how to treat your emotions. Um, if like, if a friend of yours is current, comes to you and is just like, I'm really afraid of this scenario happening, you don't go, oh, you idiot, you don't need to be afraid of that. It's um, no, uh, nothing's wrong, you're worrying for nothing, you're overreacting. Like, 
Um, it feels about as bad when you treat a part like that as it does when someone else treats you like that. And so going in and sort of taking these reactions as seriously and treating them um, as like in principle likely to be right, even, um, but uh, not necessarily completely right is the way to go. Um, sorry, I'm just gonna skim through this. I have slightly mistimed everything. Um, but yeah, so one of these sort of important things to access with interoception is like the sense of what feels true. It's um, when you, um, like when you say something out loud, pay attention to the sense of like, oh, is that right? Is that, or, or is it more like this? Um, and so you can basically gain more ac access to a lot of this information by saying things like, part of me believes this, part of me wants to do that, and seeing like how the feeling changes, how the feeling responds. Uh, an exercise I sometimes get people to do is just go around saying like obviously nonsensical things and seeing like what the feeling of like, oh, that's not right is. Like um, the population of the UK is 400 million. The population of the UK is not 400 million, just to clarify. The, the, the sky is pink. Um, like noticing the instantaneous reaction and basically going, oh, that's not right, and correcting from that. And you can do this with emotions as well. You, and you, see, you can see this if you go through some of my worked examples, like um, trying to pay attention to where the feeling is coming from, what it means, and hone in, hone in on a true version. Um, and using this, you can sort of take these emotional beliefs, these reactions like, um, I should be angry, I should be sad, and go, like, why, where is this coming from? Um, does this still make sense in context? Um, and um, no, and um, what are the emotionally salient differences? Uh, it is hard to do this in the moment. Um, usually I find this is better in advance of the thing I'm worried about or doing essentially a post-mortem of going, um, so that's how this felt. Was that right? Or could I have done this differently? Um, but I think like, all, all of this actually starts with not like, trying to change your emotional responses, but basically just learning to treat them as useful information um, uh, and asking, like, what do you want to do? And then actually doing it. Um, you can, uh, I think, those of us who are bad at emotions, um, uh, I guess, I would pass tense for, sometimes pass tense for me. Um, uh, like, often it's very tempting to just override the emotion and go, nope, this is what I've got to do. Um, but paying attention to these feelings and going, okay, how do I take this into account? Well, this is like, what, what should I do based on that? What do I want to do? Um, is the first start. Um, often this is particularly like, what would make this feel safer? Like, uh, if some part of us is worried about things going horribly wrong, um, you can just make plans to stop things from going horribly wrong. Um, and, yeah. Um, so yeah, basically just don't treat your emotions automatically wrong. It's very easy to do that and like don't uh, and will tend to not help. Um, but don't treat things automatically right either. Like go in with sort of open curiosity and go maybe um, what's up? What's up with that? Like um, and either um, and either act on it or um, try to adjust it. Um, you have to be prepared to like take it into account with. Um, and act accordingly, but you don't have to do sort of a naive thing. Just because you're angry doesn't mean you have to shout. It can, it can mean you calmly explain to someone why what they did was wrong. Um, and you're gonna get this wrong. Um, it's impossible to get this right all the time because getting it right all the time is essentially acting perfectly in all situations and nobody does that. Um, but every time these things come up, you can do better for the next time. Um, yeah. Um, and so basically what I want you to take away from this is to integrate your emotions better into your life, try to learn to understand them, and try to um, feel better every time things go wrong. Um, feel better and better. Um, here are some, fur some further reading. I've written an article about this which has some overlap with this talk. So it elaborates on some bits and misses out some others. These are two books I do recommend. Um, I'm sorry, these books are quite woo. Um, all of the best books on therapy are a bit strange, and you do need to go in taking them not um, even less, or 
differently seriously than you would me, but certainly not too seriously. Um, and um, I wish you all the best of luck. Uh, thank you very much, and I will be around for questions afterwards.